On this show, we speak our minds and open yours. This is Bongari, 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 Drummo, Drummo, Drummo. Buckle up. Now, this is Bongari, 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 Drama, Bongari, Drama. It's the headlines. Stock contrast between previously advantaged and disadvantaged universities, Nesfa's chair, and acts of heroism saved countless lives at Las Vegas shooting. A very good afternoon. I'm Rose Rataha. A donation of 25,000 books valued at 12.5 million to the Walter Sisulu University will contribute to leveling the playing field for students at previously disadvantaged institutions, Nesfa's chairperson Sizwe Nlasana said on Tuesday. In a statement, the former chief executive of Telcom SA said he made the donation to help overcome some challenges of the of the challenges within the country's higher education sector. Institutions like Walter Sisulu University have undergone major transformations since 1994, but still lack much needed support to match the standards of more advanced advanced tertiary institutions. They are not previously disadvantaged, but still to this day disadvantaged, Mathana said. While the challenges are great, the will to succeed is greater and I am very confident that Africa is on the cusp of a revolution in education. Rob Letter led better's battlefield instincts kicked in quickly as bullets rained overhead. The 42-year-old U.S. Army veteran who served as a sniper in Iraq immediately began tending to the wounded, one of several heroes to emerge from the deadliest mass shooting in modern U.S. history. Amid the massacre in Las Vegas, which left 59 people dead and more than 500 injured, there are acts of compassion and hero- her- countless heroics that officials say saved scores of lives. There was a man... Who- One survivor knows only as Zach, who herded people to a safe place. There was a registered nurse from Tennessee who died shielding his wife. Like many people in the crowd, of some 22,000 country music fans Sunday night, Ledbetter heard the pop-pop sounding noise and figured it was fireworks. Then he saw people dropping to the ground when more booms echoed in the night air. He recognized the sound of automatic weapons fires. Your sports news coming up at 2.30s. Temperatures are 21 in Johannesburg, 14 in Washington, D.C. and 24 in Lagos. Those were your sports those were your news headlines. Next up is the dramatic talk with Bongani Drama. Brandlive.co.za Drink up cause no liquor in heaven I 
remember what sober feel like If it got a percentage of them, what really like I never drive sober, I'm always in high definition Vision, 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 HD television Vision, whoa, my drink is smoking My iPhone is ringing And small ladies on the way Like first for women, put them in my crystal glass I got thirst for women, let's fill them up to the peak Make sure you don't mess on the brothers, Louis will sneaks Mark, Mark Worldwide coming through right on the dramatic talk with myself, Bongani Drama. This one is titled Every Day and we love it so much. Five after two Central African time on Brand Live Radio. I hope you're having an amazing Wednesday wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much for streaming in. A big thank you to Angelique who was holding it down on the beauty show from 12 to 12.30. Keeping you stunning, giving you all the beauty tips as well. Making the point that you stay fantastic by all means. Coming up on the show, on the Convo Corner, we're going to be talking about people who don't stay in touch giving you more and uh, you know just finding out if you are perhaps the person that doesn't stay in touch and how we can help you with uh, you know doing that as well drama attainment is also going to be coming through and we're looking at uh, Olani Guala and Terence Howard ex-wives appeal as well on Fashion Fair we have European Street where sneaker conversion comes to South Africa and we also have the uh, Jane Fonda and Helen Mirren stealing the show at the Paris Fashion Week Moe Bonang Matiba is and a few of other uh, you know South African celebrities that are found there as well. Six after two, Central African time. Brand Live. Hi, Rose. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm amazing. Thank you so much. It's quite, uh, you said it's 20, what, 25 degrees. 25 degrees. Shucks, yeah, what a thing. What a thing. Hey, we are burning up. We are burning up. And what's happening in Washington, D.C., where, uh, you know, we, there, there was a mass shooting as well? Yeah, mm. these mass shootings have been happening. It's unfortunate that they're targeting uh, music Shucks. concerts. Shucks, eh? Yeah. That's bad. That's really, really not nice, you know. And uh, I'm just hoping because it's terror attacks mostly, right? Absolutely. And so we're hoping that those things, you know, uh, sort of stay. And how many people have died? Do you know? 59. Shucks. 59 and 500 injured. And I mean, did you hear what uh, the president of the United States said to the people that were experiencing hurricanes just now? Uh, I saw... Um in one of the news, yeah, uh, what he had to say. It was actually very bad of what he said. You know, I mean, you can't go to other people's uh, territory and start telling them, you know, that they are orphans. I mean, already they know that. Already they have the, you know, the clue that they are orphans because obviously uh, the hurricane happened and they lost their lives. So. I'm not sure about Mr. President anymore, hey? Whenever I hear or listen to his speeches, I'm always wondering what happened right? that he became president. Yeah, well, there's a lot that happened. We'll never know. All righty, and did you hear about uh, the Oscar Pistorius movie that's coming through? I heard it. I actually saw it in, mm. in the news as well. Uh, people have been talking about it. Shucks. Why does he deserve th- Why does he deserve to, be, to have a movie? And who's perspective is it from is it from Pistorius because no not even because I mean you know I mean the film uh, you know centers on Oscar's court case following the fatal shooting of Riva Stienkamp now uh, Pistorius you know the family said that they distanced themselves from the lifetime film produced by A plus E networks a joint venture between the Disney ABC television group now the family doesn't really know about this so you know it's quite a, a thing for them and I think they want to appeal that it doesn't it doesn't you know go any further now, Oscar was a symbol of hope uh, for the disabled after achieving world fame in Paralympics. He was a hero, but not later turned into a villain after murdering his girlfriend. Now, Lifetime Films has made a movie about Oscar and the murder of Riva Stienkamp. It stars Andres Dam as Pistorius and Tony Gone as Stienkamp. Now, the film chronicles the true life story of the fatal shooting on Valentine's Day, his relationship with Stienkamp, and his homicide trial. So it's from someone else's perspective, really, and not really about their family. An American perspective. And it's unfortunate that it's from that perspective yeah. because they are Absolutely. trying to capitalize on this story mm. through film. Yeah. And they don't really know what happened. That's very true. Now, the film was made uh, with, uh, you know, blatant disregard of both the Stian Camp and Pistorius family as well as complete disregard for Riva and, and Oscar. Neither Oscar, the defense of the family, were involved in the production of this film in any way. But the film is already there. That's uh, quite something that's very sad for me as well, right? Mm, so I mean, it, we needed permission from the both, you know, from 
from both families as well. If you're going to have a story about me and about my life, you know, let me know. Let's sit down and let's see how we can go about it. You can't be making money alone and you can't be American about it. You know, let's, uh, you know, as South Africans tell our story as well. Have South African actors and actresses being in the movie. Absolutely. It's about time. Yeah, that's very true. It is about time. All right, folks, it is about time. Talking about time. It's five after two Central African time. Straight to the Convo Corner. People who don't stay in touch. What's your take? As Kulomeni in the Convo Corner. Check this out. It's time for the Convo Corner. It is absolutely time for the Convo Corner. And now today we're talking about people who do not stay in in touch. Do you stay in touch with your family and friends, Rose? I'm actually guilty of not staying in touch. And and why is that? Why? Like, give me the, you know, the epitome of the reason why you are not staying in touch with them. Well, I mean, it's okay to check up on them once in a while, but I mean... That is staying in touch. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. But I don't do it on a regular. So maybe I'll check you after a month or so. Uh Uh-huh. But do those people check up on you after you've yeah, checked? Yeah, they do. Okay. They're like, um, but you don't say anything. And I'm like, yeah, but I know you're okay. I know you're fine. You know, I'm praying for you and, yeah. and all <laughs> you of that. You give them the whole visage of praying for them as well. Yeah, but I mean, mm. that's what I do. That's uh, Talking to you does not mean I'm not thinking of you. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's where a lot of people miss it. Or a lot of people, that's where we miss it anyway. Because I'm very big on keeping in touch with people. And I get so sad when people don't stay in touch with me. Right? Now, it is no different than a, than a guy and a girl who are interested in each other and they never keep in contact with. Why would this be any different, right? Now, a relationship is a relationship. It is a state of real uh, relatedness. Now, those that care and want you in their life in any capacity will take the time to communicate in order to nurture that relationship like, like a plant, right? Now, it needs nurturing and attention to grow. Now, we have, all of us, the tendency of giving leniency to friends because there's no romantic involvement so we'll say to our friends no it's okay man i'm gonna keep in touch they know i love them so much i'm praying for them whatever the case may be so now this is asked if this person you are speaking of was someone you had a romantic interest in would you tolerate their lack of communication absolutely and i know that's hypocritical but i mean would you I, I would. Would you tolerate that they're not? I mean, if, oh, if no, you I would are, not tolerate absolutely, the fact if that you, they wouldn't. Yeah, because um, that's what they're saying here. If you're a, rom- a romantic, if the person that you're not keeping in touch with, if you're romantically, you know, inclined involved. with them, would you, you know, feel not not feel bad if you are not, you know, communicating with them? No, I would feel bad absolutely. because we're in a relationship. We need to be uh, talking to each other. Mm. Did you pursue me just to keep me? Do you know? Or are you pursuing me to maintain me? Absolutely. You know, those are questions to ask. The other question to ask is what will their lack of communication be communicating to you? What will it be saying to you? Are we not friends anymore? What's happening? You know, did I do something to you? Let me know. You know, I hate when people don't, uh, you know, uh, view out what they feel, you know, about a certain friend or whatever the case may be, because I feel that you need to communicate everything that needs to be communicated. Tell me if I did wrong so I can fix it, right? Communication is key. And with these WhatsApp statuses these days, yeah. people are able to not text you on WhatsApp, but they watch your statuses every day. That's very true. So at the end of the day, are you going to communicate what's happening Or are you just going to keep quiet? Mm, That's very true, you know. Are you just going to keep quiet? Now, if you were dating or married to someone, would you not let them know what your expectations are and what you require to feel connected and cared for? Which is another thing, right? Because... You know, we take it for granted when you say someone is a friend and, uh, you know, it was going to be very different if that person was romantically involved with you. Because now, obviously, this is a question that's been asked, you know, I, do you communicate this, the things with your friends or which the family member that you are, you know, are staying in touch with? You need to, from word go, to say, these are my expectations in a relationship as friends. I'll keep in touch or I don't really keep in touch with people. I feel bad to be answering WhatsApps or whatever the case may be. I have a friend that is, um, you know, she is bad on WhatsApp. She, you send her WhatsApp and she doesn't respond. You know, she was spun after five days, whatever the case may be. And she did mention that she's actually not good with that. You know, so I guess it's different strokes for different folks. Absolutely. Now, I think that people, uh, friends, family, whomever, who make little or no effort to check up on you or stay in your life or initiate contact don't really care at all, right? And that's what I think uh, stuff that's not communicated because people start thinking you don't like them anymore. 
Oh, that's why people will start asking, oh, so you still speak to me? You still communicate with me? I thought, you know, you know, not speaking to me anymore. Yeah. But that's also caused by the communication, the lack of communication, right? And uh, so uh, the other one goes, you know, amount of I missed you or I'd wonder about you can make up for the day-to-day -day act of making the effort. If you're a friend, it makes you, uh, you know, a bad friend and you probably don't actually care about the person. If you're a family member, it makes you downright very bad as well. I was busy to even send a text. I experienced that recently mm. Mm. where someone was so busy yeah. that they couldn't even text. You're, you're, so, busy. you're so busy. You're online. You're checking my statuses, yeah. but you can't even say hi. Do you know what I mean? People so are constantly. What's happening? What's Have you going lost on? interest? Yeah. Um, what's, what's happening? That's another thing. What is going on? Let me know. Let me know what's happening. Now, it is important to keep in touch with the following people, your parents, right? A call to your mom and dad means a lot to them than you probably realize. While it may seem trivial to you to let them know of that, you know, A, you got on your philosophy a midterm or pick up a phone or just to call them or tell them anything you know my car broke or i bought a new car whatever the case may be old friends no one can deny that the friendship you strive with uh, you know your old friends uh very important establishing the direction of your life can be a beautiful aspect of growing up but not everyone's path will overlap it is easy to lose touch with old friends and we're all guilty of doing it i mean i'm not really staying in touch with my primary school friends obviously because i mean we've grown older uh my high school friends some of them i still see them when i'm emceeing a gig somewhere they're in here and uh, I remember making a vow with another friend that we'll stay in touch forever. Well, it's not happening. But I mean, you know, with my varsity friends, it's a whole new different perspective because there's WhatsApp now and we, you know, stay in touch, me and them. It is simple things in life like staying in touch with friends and being true to yourself, which people regret. Staying in touch is much more important than anything else, than driving your car, than going to work. Much more important. Now, and for men, working too much is something they wish they hadn't done, Right. And uh, there's a guy here who was at a, as a, at a, at a you know, an old age home who said that uh, worked as a palliative care in Australia, cared for dying in their homes in the last three or to twelve weeks of their lives for several years. And the one thing that they mentioned is you know how to you know, staying in touch, by all means. Yeah. Now how to stay in touch? What do you think? How do you know people stay in touch? Well, optimizing our phone calls. Um, Really, even just a, ch a text, like a yeah. simple text, mm. um, because we have phones now, there's no excuse. You yeah. can email, you can text, true. you can send a voice note, you can do whatever. That's very true. Or if you want to go old school, write a letter. Write a letter if you want to go old school. I don't think people are going to be writing letters right now. I think we've, you know, gotten over that. But I mean, write a letter if you have to. If you can't send me a text or, you know, uh, email me, rather, you know, send me a text, uh, a letter. Optimize your phone calls. Keep, you know, picking up your phone call sounds obvious, right? But optimizing them. Say, friend, I'll call you on a Monday and on a Friday. Whatever the case may be, you know, you need to at least have yourselves checked out. Chat over email. Emails are great. They allow you to get in as depth as you want to. You can call your friend at 3 a.m. or email your friend rather at 3 a.m. if you want to without feeling embarrassed by anything. Especially if the friend is overseas, you know, Absolutely, then, you know, check yes. time zones and check all of that and see, you know, when you can call each other. Use social media beyond Facebook. I just think, you know, it's important to, uh, you know, always look at what your friends are doing on social media. As much as you guys are not staying in touch, most of my friends are in the entertainment business and they're constantly working. So I stay in touch with them over the internet. And the time we speak, it will be about... Oh, I saw you doing this. Congratulations. This is amazing. You know what I mean? Whatever the case may be that I saw today was a fun day for you and all the cases be because then I already saw what is happening with them on social media. So that's another way of staying in touch, liking their stuff as well, I guess. There's nothing wrong with catching up. Nothing wrong with catching up. Plan a trip. Whether it is to 27 boxes in Melville, you know, that's a, a trip planned. Catch a taxi. Come through, you know. There's See, so many places to explore here. Absolutely. There's right? shops, you know, there's restaurants, you know, there's coquettos. There's a lot of people to experience. Absolutely. If you want to. Now, that is, uh, you know, some of the things. Or send a real mail, like you said. Send a letter if you want to. Or send a fan mail or fax mail, whatever the case may be. And, hey, who knows? They might call you back or they might send back. 
Absolutely. But I, so. I find it very important. I'm a person that stays in touch. I've said it before. I stay in touch with everyone. I mean, I just spoke to my mom before the show. And, uh, you know, I stay in touch with my family. I stay in touch even if it's on WhatsApp with my friends. We have an entire WhatsApp group with my friends. And we're constantly staying in touch with each other. What we're doing, how we're doing it, have we gotten there yet? But, you know, it's different strokes for different folks, like I mentioned. Yeah, you stay in touch with me as well. I mm. mean, I hardly, I only see you on Wednesdays. Absolutely. But I mean, I'm always updated and I know what's happening. Absolutely. You know, so yeah. Communication, staying in touch is quite important. It is very important. Alrighty, folks, what is your take? Let us know on social media at Bongani underscore drama, hashtag the Convo Corner, at Brand Live Radio on Twitter, at BrandLive.co.za on Facebook as well. What you know and what you want to find out as well about it. Our Skype number, if you want to call us live on A's 011 083 that's 011 083 as well. Let us know what you think about our conversation, people that are staying in touch. On the other side of this, we do drama attainment. It's 20 after 2. Stick around. Brandlive.co.za. You're listening to Brandlive.co.za, an industry first in the world of internet radio. Not only are we an internet radio station, we are an internet radio platform for your brand. So why not expose your brand to potentially thousands of listeners and improve your customer relationships and brand equity with podcasts and live broadcasts? Be sure to check brandlive.co.za for more information. Brandlive.co.za, harnessing the power of internet radio.
Mel Olisejane on Brand Live Radio.co.za. Coming through with uh, moving on. Move on. Are you moving on from your ex? Are you moving on from your spouse? Whoever the case may be that you're moving on with. We love it right here on the Dramatic Talk with myself, Bongani Drama. It is 24 after 2. Time for Drama Attainment. Scene one, Apple take one. It's the, it's the drama payment. Absolutely, time for drama attainment right on the dramatic talk. The first story coming through is Kolani Gwala. Now, the anchor of the Best Breakfast Show on 702 revealed on Friday that he has been diagnosed with colon cancer. It was quite sad, actually, uh, you know, reading that and uh, finding out as well that, um, you know, colon cancer taking his toll in his life, right? Yeah, um... Colon cancer is very dangerous mm. as well. I'd, um, yeah, imagine. I mean it plays around the intestines, plays around the liver, so can't be good. Your colonial, your colonial area. Your yeah. colonial area. Mm. Now he has been off the airways for some weeks now due to this health scare. Now he confirmed the cancer and mentioned that he ran the London Marathon in April and experienced a fever, high fever. Now tests were done and a discovery of the cancer was made and there's still a lot of ha- uh, to happen as an operation has been made uh, to remove a tumour, you know, and now there's more that needs to be done. Obviously he still needs to go and do some chemo and all of that. He mentioned that it's not just cancer, it is advanced. So it's advanced cancer. Now celebrities who all of a sudden care, that's my other problem, that, uh, you know, the celebrities that all of a sudden they care, they're sending love and messages, but I don't think they've been communicating with them for quite some time or ever in their case anyway, you know. And that's something I wanted to ask a, a entertainment, you know, journalist or an entertainment, you know, a commentator about why do celebrities have to act like that? But I think that's the nature of the industry. It takes sickness or death mm. for someone to value your another life. person's life. That's true. Which is quite sad. Mm. Yeah. What a sad thing to say. Now, Mr. Guala mentioned that he was prepared to fight. And, uh, you know, we're hoping that the family and friends that are really, really close to him will, you know, help to fight with him. And his 702 family as well will fight with him. So we really, really, uh, you know, uh, wish him the best. And we know that he's going to fight it. And, you know, he will he'll heal. He'll heal. He's quite a strong man, you know, Mr. Guala. Yeah, and um, he needs all the support he could get, especially Absolutely. from his colleagues. Absolutely. And um, his family, because chemo, chemotherapy already, Radiation is quite a journey for someone to go through. Yeah. You know? Shucks. So, yeah, it's quite intense. It's quite intense. Alrighty, the next story coming through on Drama Attainment is Terence Howard, ex wife appeal. Now, the ex wife has won an appeal in court. Now, the ex-spouse Michelle Gent Howard got a ruling on their spousal support overturned. Now, two years ago, Terence Howard convinced the uh, High Court that he has been forced to sign the marital settlement under duress. Now, he claimed that the ex-wife threatened to go public with nude pictures and videos. Now, the appeal uh, victory means the marital settlement is reinstated and Terence will have to start paying spousal support again. It is unclear as to how much he will have to pay. Uh, for me, this is a, a day-to-day, you know, Celebrity in scandal. scandal, you know, uh, and they have to pay millions because we got married. The divorce has to be about five hundred, whatever million dollars, and uh, you know, there's kids involved. There's that involved, and I mean, if you you don't want to give me this money, I've got pictures and you know, and videos of ourselves of me and you naked. That's another thing. That's why I don't. I do not. I hate sending news to people. I don't care how much you think I trust you. I don't. I would never know what's going to happen. Either way, we're not safe because I, I don't trust these new, these smartphones. These smartphones are very smart as well because yeah. people, as you're taking that video, they are looking they at are you. They are looking. Yeah. That's very true. So, um, yeah, it's quite, quite a scandal, this it one. It is. Um, because, yeah, people take op- opportunities. Yeah, People they take do. Opportunities. They do. And um, like we were talking about d- divorce parties yeah. um, the other day. Is this what divorce parties encourage? You know? That we should, um, as soon as I see that you're bawling, I'm going to take out all the. I'm going the to dirt. dish out all the dirt on you mm. and make money out of you. Mm, that's true. I don't understand why, though, that happens, you know? Because, I mean, obviously, that's a threat. That you are threatening me. That is literally you just now saying that, you know what? If you don't give me this money, I've got nudes and I've got a video. 
and I've got an entire sex tape and it's going out. And it happens a lot in America. It happens a lot with, you know, these celebrities, celebrities in New York and it's quite a thing. So don't send out your nudes, kids. Stay in school. All right? I agree. <laughs> because, I mean, anything could happen. I mean, you know, you'd never know. There's, uh, you know, you can save them at uh, uh, cloud. But, I mean, if someone hacks your cloud, what happens? Your news are everywhere. The people who created cloud will hack your cloud Absolutely. and expose you. But, I mean, obviously, people get exposed now and they become celebrities. So, I'm sure some people will be happy. Mm, I guess. I agree as well. Alrighty, it's uh, 1 before 2.30. Folks, it's time for your sponsor with the Rose. What do you have for sports for us? Time to talk about sports. Don't touch that dial. It's time for the sports news. Brandlive.co.za. Hansen accuses Kutsia of playing mind games. A very good afternoon. I am Rose Rataha. New Zealand coach Steve Hansen has dismissed a defeased comment by South Africa counterpart Alistair Kutsia as reverse psychology ahead of a rugby championship clash this weekend. Speaker of, speaking after 27-27 draw with Australia last weekend, Kutsia said those who believe his inexperienced spring box can easily topple all blacks is living in paradise. And in golf, Rory McIlroy will look to end the season on a high this weekend as he seeks a first win of the year at the Alfred Dunhill Lynx Championship. The Northern Irishman returned to form last week at the British Masters as he carded closing rounds of 64 and 63 to finish second behind his first-time winner Paul Dune. It was a welcomed boost for Matt Leroy after a season hampered by a rib injury. And in your soccer, Sundowns have seven out with injury. Mamelodi Sundowns will seemingly be grateful for the international break as seven first-team players in head coach Pizzo Musimani's squads Pito Musimani's squad are working their way back from injury. Midfielder Opa Magnesa, ringer George Libesi, forwards Yannick Zakri and Anthony Lafo, goalkeeper Telangubeni, as well as defenders Rivaldo Kutsia and Somahoro Bangli are all out with are all out with anxiety of ailments. The seven stars all missed out on Sundown's victory over Platinum Stars on the first of October. Although they they all now will although they all will now have over two weeks to recover from the injuries during FIFA's two week international period. Fixtures to look forward to Friday, January 5th, 2018, Vitz versus Free State Stars and HX Cape Town versus Maritzburg United. Saturday, the January 6th, 2018, Bulugwane City versus Mamelodi Sundowns, Supersport United versus Kaiser Chiefs and Orlando Pirates versus Baroka FC. Those were your news headlines. Stay tuned. Those are your sports headlines. Stay tuned to the dramatic talk with Wangani Drava. Thank you so much, Rose. Now, those are, you know, injured players. Wow, what a thing. And they have to play. Seven injured, so they have like Shucks. two weeks to recover and How? they have to get back. How does it happen? Two, seven? Yeah, I mean, soccer is a lot. We don't really... Um, take into account that these people go into training and yeah. you know you might injure your ankle mm. or most mostly they injure their groins yeah more than anything yeah. right <laughs> so it's quite intense it's quite intense yeah but seven Shucks. seven is a lot you seven know, out of eleven I can imagine sure yeah. do you know what I mean that's an entire team you know yeah. but I mean uh, you know big ups to the people that are going to be making what, is it, what, are, what are they called again the people that are the, the masseuse the or misuse, the, yeah. the doctors that are that handle the players, whatever the case may be. They'll be looking at some chiseled guys there. <laughs> 1433 on Brand Live Radio, the dramatic talk. We come back with Fashion Fair to stick around. Brandlive.co.za Have you ever thought about the power of social media? Social media has the power to make your business grow. Grow! Yeah. Why don't you let us manage your social media? Because our business is to see your business grow. Visit us at www.beastownmedia.co.za.
His name is Kumba the DJ. Catch him on all your social media platforms at Kumba the DJ. This one is titled Wrong Beats. It's got a new one coming through. That's he's going to be uh, debuting, I think, this coming Friday. He does an amazing job. He works right there at, I think, Hilbra Radio as well. Doing quite amazing for himself. So 1437. Time for Fashion Fat. Let's go straight to it. Fashion, fashion, fit. Absolutely time for fashion fad and stunning stories coming through, including sneakers, you know, convention coming to South Africa. Now, sneakers are a big thing, right? And the uh, the sneaker convention has actually been happening for quite some years. I know it has been happening in Johannesburg, but, you know, in a small scale, obviously, because we tend to, you know, take stuff from what Americans are doing and we want to do it for ourselves. But now the biggest one is coming, you know, and uh, it's actually a- an exchange of sneakers i hope people wash their sneakers i don't know if it's new sneakers or the sneakers that you've worn before um i think it's like i don't know <laughs> sneakers you've worn, you've worn before, before because it's a sneaker exchange yeah or they're probably calling it sneaker exchange because it's like a whole festival on ah, sneakers yes, so yes. um your adidas your nike whatever the case may and be your puma sneakers yeah now, where sneakers fans and manufacturers come together to buy, sell, and swap footwear and street fashion will debut in Africa in Johannesburg from 16th to 19th of November 2017. Now, European streetwear sneaker convention comes to South Africa sneakers. Now, already it has a global following with events, uh, you know, taking place in Berlin, in Cologne, in Amsterdam, in Paris, in Moscow, in uh, Warsaw, and uh, Zurich as well. Now, the convention in November will offer limited edition merchandise as well as the series of workshops, launches and talks from the world's best footwear and streetwear brands as well. Now, international brands and major sneaker stores as well as private sellers and collectors from all over the world will come together to buy, sell, swap footwear and street fashion from classic and real rarities. Now, to the newest trends and street culture alongside the finest sneaker vendors, visitors would experience street art, graffiti, music as well as good food and drinks. Now, Josie fans can get a glimpse of what they might expect to see at this global show at the Sneak Peek Preview event on Thursday the 19th, Sunday the 22nd of October, and, uh, you know, at Shop One, Connor Kruger and Main Street in Maboneng. So this is just a teaser of what's going to be happening, you know, on in November, rather. Now, uh, tickets are complimentary, but online registrations is essential. The preview event will include product launches and merchandise from sneakers and partage, workshops, masterclasses, masterclasses about sneakers. I wonder. I just recently, um, I was working at the Let's Play Outside Festival and, you yeah. know, it's an it's a festival where artists come together uh-huh. they're uh, local artists who sing in terms of music and I there were actually workshops that were happening there like the Bansula dance workshop ah, nice. and entrepreneurship as well but with sneakers 
I'm so with worried. sneakers, they probably you know people who do graffiti on sneakers, ah, they'll probably give okay, a talk right. on how to pursue and sustain that kind of business okay. in the sneaker game. Nice. I think that is amazing actually, right? Because I'm a big fan of sneakers, but I mean, I don't know if I would have to go to a convention for them. I'll see in actual fact. Now, tickets to the main sneaker rest convention are available online on sneakers.com. Something big that uh, is happening. Paris Fashion Week is actually happening as we speak. I know the likes of Bonang Matiba is there. There's a guy that works at um, Jonathan. It's not Jonathan. The one that is a top billing Khaled guy. I think it is Jonathan. Mm, I'm not really certain. He also does theater so much. I just forgot his name now. But uh, he's also there. He's doing quite amazing. And now Jane Fonda and Helen Mirren stole the show at Paris Fashion Week. These are now grannies, right? And this was a showstopper. Models over 50 are being hired for more, uh, you know, for more fashion shows than ever before. What better way to celebrate that step forward? Greater representation than by casting two of the most iconic women on earth. Jane Fonda and Helen Alan Mirren starred in L'Oreal's show during the Paris Fashion Week on Sunday. They literally stamped, uh, stopped traffic as they walked a runway smack in the middle of Paris. Champs Alice's alongside younger models including Liva Kebede and Winnie Hallow. Now the event marked a first time L'Oreal has put on a fashion beauty and uh, show and two iconic actresses walked in their roles as spokeswoman for the brand. Now Mirren joined L'Oreal as the UK ambassador in 2014 and Fonda has also been with the brand in 2014 according to your you know people's mac it wasn't their you know mere involvement that stole the show miren swung and cane in a pair of on-trend gray plaid pants you need to see these go online and watch this she looks amazing iconic she does the right i mean gray hair and everything oh, but she is rocking the runway rocking the runway with a, with a cane. With a cane as well. And Fonda gave uh, peace signs in a tiger print dress. What amazing. And it it's looks amazing. Velvet and leather. Oh, I want that actually. I'm going to get that for my next jacket, I think. It's quite amazing. It's beautiful. I love it so much. All right, folks, those were your news right here on Fashion Fad on the Dramatic Talk with myself. Bongani Drama, 1442 Central African Time. Now, Issa Matthews is a South African hip hop singer. He actually uh, had debuted a song titled Pearl Tusi as well. And uh, so so he's debuting another one right here with us on the show. We're going to tell you the name a little bit later, but uh, we love him so much. Here's a brand new one by Issa Matthews right here on the Dramatic Talk. We'll come back with your news headlines. Stick around. Bono, Petro, Professor, Israel, 
Matthews coming through right here. This one is titled Ohamba Nobani, rather right here on BrainLive.co.za. Because it's a new one, right? So it's quite confusing the title because this Durban fine is happening and a lot of other people are happening. Issa Matthews, we're trying to get him over, you know, to speak at least two hours over the line, but he's not answering. But hopefully, uh, you know, he heard that we're playing his uh, track. We love it so much. It's, it's a vibe. A, it is quite a vibe. It's quite amazing. We love it so much. It's uh, it's not calm, but it's it's very housey as all right. We love it so much. Now, on the corner of the corner, as it goes through uh, the entire show, we're asking you about, you know, people that don't stay in touch. In touch and Chawa yeah. Chase Ngoma says, I guess it depends on the relationship friend or family it's normal to stay in touch with family but not normal if it's with a friend lol this could just be me <laughs> you know it could just be him that's very true you know so it's uh yeah it's different for him you know it could be family or friends whatever the case may be but with family it's more important than a friend he mentions but i think you know give it a level of uh, maturity for both somehow obviously you know uh you know some families are not very fond of friends and you know you never know about friends i mean i'm more with my family than my friends so it's yeah, same here. Mm. I'm friends with most of my aunts mm. and my cousin. Yeah. And then I have like a few friends. Ah, but yeah, right. keeping in touch with family is very important. Quite we can't important. just meet at funerals no. or, um, or a party. weddings. Or yeah. wedding, yeah. Like, you know, have a family, you know, gathering, family reunion so that, uh, you know, things can be fantastic, I guess. And drama, drama also. And there's going to be lots of drama always. And the granny is always the one that knows about the drama. Absolutely. You know, I know about the drama as well, though. Oh, you do? Mm. Because you chill with the grand. Yes, I yeah? do. Grand is your BFF. <laughs> you know, she sends you to go buy some snuff. And when you come back, she tells you all the news. Absolutely. You know, you smoke the nyaupe together with the grands. And then the grands nyaupe. <laughs> <laughs> all right, folks, it's 1448 on the Dramatic Talk, right on Brain Live Radio. Co. Zeta. Skype line Skypeline number, if you want to conversate with us, is 011038606. On Twitter, we are Brain Live Radio. On Facebook, it's www.brainliveradio.co.za as well. Time for your news headlines before we wrap up the show with Rose Rataha. It's the headlines. Recapping your top stories, stock contrast between previously advantaged and disadvantaged universities, Nesfa's chair, and acts of heroism saved countless lives at Las Vegas shooting. A very good afternoon, I am Rose Rataha. A donation of 25,000 books valued at 12.5 million to the Walter Sisuli University will contribute to leveling the playing field for students at previously disadvantaged institutions, NESFA's chairperson Sizwe Masana said on Tuesday. In a statement, the former chief executive of Telcom SA said he made the donation to help overcome some of the challenges within the country's higher education sector. Institutions like Walter Sisuli University have undergone major transformations since 1994, but still lack much needed support to match the standards of more advanced tertiary institutions. They are not previously disadvantaged, but to this day still disadvantaged. While the challenges are great, the will to succeed is greater and I am very confident that Africa is on the cusp of a revolution in education. 
Rob Ledbetter's battlefield instincts kicked in quickly as bullets rained overhead. The 42-year-old U.S. Army veteran who served as a sniper in Iraq immediately began tending to the wounded, one of several heroes to emerge from the deadliest mass shooting in modern U.S. history. Amid the massacre in Las Vegas, which left 59 people dead and more than 500 injured, there were acts of compassion on countless heroics that officials say saved scores of lives. There was a man, there was a man, one survivor knows only as Zach, who herded people to a safe place. There was a registered nurse from Tennessee who died shielding his wife. Like many people in the crowd of some 22,000 country music fans Sunday night, Led Better heard the pop sounds, pop noise of guns and figured it was fireworks. Then he saw people dropping to the ground. When more booms echoed in the night, he recognized the sound of automatic weapons fire. The gunman, identified as Stephen Craig Paddock, a 64-year-old retired accountant from Mesquite, Nevada, created his own sniper's perch inside the 32nd floor room at the Mandalay Bay Casino Hotel across from the concert grounds. Those were your news headlines. Temperatures are 21 in Johannesburg, 14 in Washington, D.C., and 24 degrees in Lagos. Yeah, uh, quite intense. The shooting, hey, what a thing. Absolutely. So what happened? This guy was stationed at a hotel room. So let me tell you, he was on the 32nd floor of mm. a, at the Mandalay um, Hotel yeah. in Las Vegas. So just across the concert. Uh-huh. And he, so the shooter was seen gambling just before shoot, the shooting happened and Shucks. had spent thousands. Oh, wow. So Mike Rowe, the opera singer, host and narrator of... BBC News said in a lengthy Facebook post on Tuesday that he was a frequent visitor at the Mandalay Bay Hotel where the wow. gunman shot at the crowd of 22,000 from a room on the 32nd floor of mm. Las Vegas Hotel. So Roe pondered um, that if he sat on the same bar stool as the shooter or slept in the same bed as he previously stayed on the second f- oh, on wow. the 32nd floor before. So, yeah. What a thing, hey? Yeah. So he stood there and he started shooting and at everyone outside. he started shooting. So he shot at the window. Yeah. So shooting. the latest, wow. though, is that um, in the deadliest mass shooting in mod- modern U.S. history, at least 59 people were killed mm. and more than 500 wounded after a gunman opened fire at Revelas at the Route 91 festival held near the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. Shucks. Police confirmed that the suspect who had at least... 20 rifles in his room on the 32nd floor killed himself. They identified him as Stephen Paddock, a 64-year-old local resident. Latest investigations reveal that a total of 47 firearms have been recovered from three locations, including the gunman's hotel room and two properties associated with him. So he had 47 firearms and more. Shucks, hey? I heard. I heard about that one. You know, I heard that he had a, a, quite, quite a lot. Even, you know, at home, he had a lot and it was quite a thing. Yeah, so it wasn't just... The 47 was at the hotel mm. and there were m- lots more around him. Shucks, eh? So, yeah, it's quite unfortunate that these people are targeting concerts because yeah. I remember earlier on I think it was last year or earlier on this year the yeah. Ariana Grande's concert mm. which something similar happened right something similar happened mm. and she had to you know compensate for families mm. now um, a candlelight vigil was held uh, yeah, I saw last that. night I saw that as um, well yeah. All right. And Quite a thing. Vegas, yeah. That's it. But we, you know, hoping for the best. I mean, everyone is praying we're and praying we're praying for, for all the families. families. Yeah. Uh, just when we thought um, these natural hazards have stopped, <laughs> these are Happening. man-made hazards now. What a thing. What yeah. a thing. And I mean, there's a breaking story that came through as of just now that shots fired at journalists outside NMU. Now, police are at the Nestle Mandela University South Campus after shots were fired at the journalists covering the student protest. Quite a thing. Shootings are happening for days. Alrighty, folks, we have to say goodbye to you. And uh, if you just missed the show, with lots that were happening on the show, including the Convo Corner, where we're talking about, uh, you know, student, uh, not student protests, but people who don't stay in touch. And uh, thank you so much for your views as well on all social media platforms. And on Drama Entertainment, we're looking at, uh, you know, how Olani Gwala, uh, diagnosed with colon cancer, and Terence Howard's wife, you know, appealed at court and fashion fair at European Street, where sneaker convention comes to South Africa. And uh, Jane Fond and Helen Mirren stole the show at the Paris Fashion Week. All right.
So that's it for the show today. Yep. The dramatic talk with myself, Bongani Drama Rose. Thank you so much for the uh, news headlines and sports bulletins as well. And thank you for having me here all the time. All right, let's do it again next week. Absolutely. All righty. Five before three, folks. Some CZ World already playing the background. The name is Bongani Drama. This has been another fantastic feature of the dramatic talk right on BrenLiveRadio.co.za. To God be the glory and amazing Wednesday feather. Bye bye. Now, this is Bongani, 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 Bongani,